God, this morning again for the opportunity of prayer. God, we thank you, Lord, for the privilege of calling upon the name of God, Lord in heaven. Now, Father, I know, God, that you know who's here this morning. And Lord, we know that you know, God, who's here and don't know you. Somebody here today is lost. Someone here today needs a Savior. And I pray by the Spirit of the living God, Lord, you'd send old-time Holy Ghost conviction. God, grip them, God, with the, Lord, the reality. God, implant into their hearts the reality of an eternal burning hell where those that will die and go except they be born again. God, we thank you for salvation. We thank you, Lord, for your help. We pray this morning, God, again, that you'd help us as we preach the Word of God. God, forgive me my sins, my failures. God, anything that would hinder me today from preaching the Word of God, I pray, God, you cleanse me of it. I pray, God, you move me aside and may the Spirit of God take over. In Jesus' name, amen. <coughs> you ask my wife, I hardly caught it all this morning. Give me just a minute, we'll get started. After this, verse number 1 of, of John chapter number 5. After this, there was a feast of the Jews. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there was at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Beth Bethesda, having five porches. In this lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water, for an angel went down at a certain season into the pool <clears throat> and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and he knew that he had been a, how, how a long time in that case, he said to him, Will thou be made whole? What a question. Will thou be made whole? Now, friend, that question goes far and broad this morning to sick folks, to sin sick folks. Wilt thou be whole? Will you come to know the Lord as your Savior if you're lost? Wilt thou be made whole? Is that something you desire? I told you of a man last week that I talked to and haven't had an opportunity to speak to him on the same thoughts again. But he said that he knew that when he that he'd been so bad that he knew when he left this world that he was going to hell. And I said, I said, does that not concern you at all? He said, no, that doesn't concern me. And I said to him, you don't mean that. You don't understand. You, that has to bother you. You don't really mean that it don't bother you. But friend, the question to him, if I had him said in here this morning, will thou be made whole? Do you have to go to hell? Do you have to die in your sins? Will thou be made whole? Well, Jesus was asking this of a man that, that was not, uh, you know, that... that uh, was not a lost man we, we'll find that out in a little bit but he wasn't a lost man and he asked him will you be made whole will, will thou be made whole will you be healed and here's what the man said to him <clears throat> the impotent man answered him the impotent means that he had no power he was totally powerless the impotent man answered him sir I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, took up his bed, and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. Now that's the religious crowd. They're not interested in his being made whole, their religious, they're, they are interested in it. Why is he carrying his bed on the Sabbath day and breaking the law? That's all they care about. Let me say, the religious crowd don't care about much today except doing everything in order to, uh, to gain uh, uh, power and authority. That's what the religious crowd wants to do. And I said many times, I'm glad Jesus got a hold of me before the religious crowd did. Amen. He answered him that made he answered them, He that made me hold the same said unto me, Take up thy bed and walk. Then asked they him, What man is that which said unto thee, Take up thy bed and walk? And he that was healed knew not, for it was who it was, for Jesus conveyed himself away, 
and a multitude being in that place. Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more, lest the worst thing come unto thee. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. Now listen, apparently this is a disease, this is a crippling disease that was brought upon this fellow because of some sin. Now all sickness is not because of sin. Sometimes you just get sick. Amen. And you, you've, not, you've not sinned, you just sickness comes upon you. God allows that. But sometimes men can sin. And God can warn them, and as a, as a form of punishment, God let them get sick. And that's what apparently he had done to this, because he said, uh, uh, go and sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon thee. So this man was here because of, of, of some sin. But let me, let's go back now to the beginning of the, of the story, and let's tell the story this morning. So there was a feast of the Jews. Now all Jewish men went to the feast. Uh, this may have been the Feast of, of Pentecost, whatever feast it was, but it was required of Jewish men that they go to the feast. And Jesus had gone up to that feast. Why? Because he wanted to fulfill the law. That's what he come to do. He come as ordered by, uh, you know, as, as ordered by the Word of God. He came, and he came to fulfill the law. So that's why Jesus was there. Now, he, he went to this uh, market pool, a pool at the market is called the sheep market. What was that? That was a place in the in the in the wall where the sheep were led for sacrifice. It was called the sheep gate. You find that over in the book of Nehemiah. It was called a sheep gate where the sheep came in to to uh, uh, be sacrificed. They would come in that gate. And they would be cleansed in that pool. Many you know sometimes that was what was done. But here we have this pool being around there and it had five porches on it now you just use your imagination because we can't go over to Israel and we can't see today exactly what those porches were but use your thought of what a porch is what's a porch on your house for it's, now deck's not a porch that's different a deck don't you don't have a roof on it a porch got a roof on it so if you can if you've got a deck not a porch just imagine you sitting on your deck with a, a roof on it so these porches, he was there with, with, at a place with five porches, and those porches were there so that people could come, and they would, that, that was a, a common bath, and people would come, and they would get ready on those porches to enter that bath. And so they were sitting around on the porches, and why were they just sitting there? They were waiting on the moving of the water. The Bible tells here that sometimes an angel would come down and trouble the water or stir the waters up, and then those that got into the water, that one got into the water first, could be made healed and could be made whole. And so we, hear, we see these five porches, five being the number of grace, we see these five porches around this pool of Bethesda, and there was a great multitude of powerless people. Now, friend, we liken that somewhat today to many churches that are full of powerless people. They're impotent. Many churches sit today and they don't have the Spirit of God moving up and down the aisles and coming behind the pulpit and helping folks today. But I'm glad, friend, today that we are not an impotent church this morning. Amen. God's here with us. And, and he, but here lay a, a multitude of impotent folk waiting on one thing, and that's for the moving of the water, waiting for the stirring of the water so that they might be made whole. So when that happened, that, that individual that came down, got in the water, they were made whole and went their way. Now we see this, we see this man, and he was uh, lying there, and he'd been laying there 38 long years. Now how did he get there every day? Someone must have brought him. And they brought, why didn't they stay there with him and help him into the water? No, they were interested in getting him there, but they weren't interested in helping him after they got him there. Let me say to you today, friend, we need those that we, that we bring to the house of God that are lost without God. We need to be interested not only getting them here, but when we get them there, we need to be interested in getting them in. Amen. How do you get them in, preacher? Well, you pray for them that God in heaven would convict them of their sin. 
And you pray for the preacher that he preached to them a message that they can hear and be made whole. But someone got him there, but nobody helped him get in. Now, friend, I'll say to you today that that man came every day. He, he came every day on his bed, probably just a cot rolled up. He come on his bed, and there he laid, and he was waiting, and he could look down there and see the moving of the water. And the water would begin to stir, and he'd try to get his way down there somehow. He was empty. He was lame. He couldn't get up and walk. Maybe he could crawl. And maybe when the water would move, he'd move toward that water. And maybe just when he almost got there and he would think, I'm just about made it in, someone else would get, get in there. And he'd think, well, maybe tomorrow. 38 years every day of his life, he laid in that pool. Now, this was not something that Jesus didn't know about. Jesus knew about this. And so this man lay there with hope. He laid there. I'll say to you, he was a faithful man. No matter what happened, 38 years, the Bible says he laid there. 38 years he came with faith believing that this would be the day. Now, friend, I've been alive almost 57 years. Almost, not yet. Almost 57 years I've been alive. Almost, not yet. I've been saved since I was 8 years old, so do the math, somebody, real quick for me. How long is that, 39 years? 49 years, oh my goodness. Now I'm, I'm going to say I have not lived every day expecting Jesus to come back, except expecting to be out of here. But I've lived every day, I know I've been saved. Sometimes the devil's tried to make me doubt that. But I know by the grace of God I've been born again because I've done everything the Bible says about salvation. And every day, now we can look and expect Jesus to come. If you're here today and you're saved by the grace of God, this may be the day that He comes. This might be the day that we get out of here. This might be the day that we get to heaven. Amen. Wouldn't that be a wonderful thought? If the Jesus come back today, that you and I would go out of here to be with Him in the presence of the Lord forever? Hallelujah! But if He don't come today, what am I going to do? Am I going to give up? No, I'm going to go waiting on the Lord. Now this man, every day he went down there laid by that pool, waiting on the moving of the water. He couldn't get in. Why? Because he was powerless to get in. Let me say what else I see here. I see here also that this man being powerless to get in, I'll say to you today that you're powerless to get into heaven without the help of Jesus. Amen. Without the help of the Lord. Hey, I'm, I'm as confident as I can stand here that that man could have laid there till he died and he'd have never got in except Jesus passed his way. Nobody was going to help him. There was only one that could help him and that was Jesus. And I'll say this to you today, friend, that you and I, people, people die and go to hell every day because they won't trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. They're not looking for Him. They're looking in what they can do to get to God. Let me ask you something. What can you do to get to the Lord? Is there anything that you can do to get to God? Can you live good enough to get to God? The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Is there anyone here that's without sin? Can't get to God. Well, preacher, I'll be faithful to church every Sunday, every Sunday night, every Wednesday night, every fellowship, every time the door's open, I'm going to be faithful to God. But if you miss one, you've not been faithful. Are you going to get to God because you're faithful to church? If you, may, if you make every Sunday and don't miss any, is that going to get you to God? Is that something that will get you to God? No. You say, preacher, I'm going to give, I'm going to give half of what I got. <coughs> I'm going to give it to the missionary. I'm going to buy my way into heaven because I'm going to help everybody else get there. Is that going to get you to God? You're helpless. Your good works. Oh, preacher, I'm going to do everything. I'm going to live right. I'm going to do right. I'm going to work till Jesus comes. And I like that song, we work till Jesus comes. We should. But I'll tell you something. Work all the days of your life. Without Jesus coming by, you'll never get to God. Without the help of Jesus, you'll never get to God. You'll die and go to hell without Him. Your, work, your good works will not get you there, your money won't get you there. But Jesus will get you there. Amen. Jesus will get you there. So this man laying there, maybe trusting in his own good works, 
to one day get him in, but he'd never get him in. He wasn't good enough to get into God. Now Jesus comes by there and he, for a purpose, he sees this man, he knows all about him because he knows that he'd been laying there 38 years. And what does he ask the man when he comes up to him? He said, will you be made whole? Will you get saved? Will you be saved from your sickness? Will you be healed of your diseases? Will you be made whole? Now, if that was me, I tried to put, when I studied this last night, I began to think, how would I answer that question? Will thou be made whole? You know what? Some people today, when they're, you talk to them about their salvation, I've talked to people, and they say, well, maybe tomorrow. Pharaoh wanted to want, when Pharaoh was plagued with the frogs, remember the story of the children of Israel and the plagues that come upon Egypt, and there was one plague that, was frogs that come everywhere, you know, and they was frogs here and frogs there and uh, frogs hopping everywhere. And I'll make a rhyme here in a minute. But anyway, there was frogs all over the place. <coughs> Pharaoh wanted to see all those other plagues go. But with this one, he said, <coughs> he said, on tomorrow, on tomorrow you can remove these frogs. Why did he want to wait one more day for that plague to be gone? I've never been able to answer that question. But Pharaoh wanted one more night with the frogs. <coughs> now I've talked to many people that say, Preacher, maybe next week. Maybe next time. Talk to a fellow down in the nursing home. Years ago, he was on death's bed. Now you could tell he wasn't going to be around long. And we went there every other Sunday. We went there, me and, me and a friend of mine, we went there to preach the gospel. And every Sunday I'd go to that man. He'd raise his hand every Sunday that he was lost, every Sunday. <clears throat> every Sunday he'd raise his hand when I'd get all the talk to him lost. Every Sunday I'd go to him and I'd say, Sir, wouldn't you like to be saved? And the last answer I heard out of the man was the first answer I heard out of him. Not today. Not today. I'll wait. Not today. The man's on death's door. I'm certain he's not alive today. And unless something happened, unless somebody come along behind me and reap some fruit that I could not reap, but maybe I watered, unless he got, unless he got saved, he went to hell. The last thing I heard him say was, not today. Not today. Now, if I were that man laying by the well or by the pool of <coughs> Bethesda, that means the house of mercy. I believe, I think, I would like to think that I'd say, yes, I would like to be made whole. But this man didn't answer that way. How did he answer the question when Jesus said, <clears throat> will thou be made whole? The empty man asked him, sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another step with them before me. He didn't say, no, I want to be made whole. He said, I just don't have any way. Now, you look at this one or two ways. That number one, that he was relying upon himself to get there, but you look at it also like this, that he knew that he was never going to get there and that if somebody didn't help him, he was never going to be made whole. And that's the way I look at this, not that he doubted, <coughs> but that he was telling Jesus, I have no way to get there. He was surrendered to the fact that he could not do it on his own. Now what did Jesus do? Jesus said to him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. A man laying on his bed 38 years, never had moved. Somebody comes along and tells him, Rise, take up your bed, and walk. Did this fellow say, There ain't no way that's going to happen. I can't get in the water. 
there's no way that this is going to work because I've not made it to the water yet. Do you know what I found out about this man? He laid there 38 years, but he laid there in faith. Why did he lay there in faith? Because it said immediately he stood up, took it. He knew something had happened when Jesus came by. Amen. He knew that something had changed in his life when Jesus came by. And friend, the day you got saved, you knew that something happened in your life because Jesus come by. And he got up from there, he picked up his bed, and he headed out. Amen. Now, I think he left there with some kind of emotion, don't you? Amen. He got his bed up, but he took that thing, put it over his shoulder, and he walked. And all these legs are working, and I'm doing good, and I'm going to go. And so down he down the street he went. I bet everybody he come by, guess what happened to me? Man, come by my way, and now, I'm, now I can walk again. Amen. Just like it was with you when you first got saved. You won't tell everybody about it when you first got saved, didn't you? What happened to us? We got used to got used to walking again. Did this, did this man carry on that way? I don't know. When he found out who it was healed him, he did go back and tell the, the people, it was Jesus that made me whole. He wasn't tattletaling. He just wanted it to be known who made him whole. He went by and told it. But did it go on forever? I don't know. This is all we know about the man. Never heard hear anything from him again. What happens to us, friend? We ought to be just as eager to tell about Jesus as the day we got saved because guess what? We're just as whole now as the day Jesus saved us by His grace. Amen. So he said, he got up, he took up his bed, and he walked. Now there's the story of the man that was 38 years had his sickness. Now, y'all don't get excited, but that's my introduction to the message I want to preach you. Amen. Preacher, you do this all the time. Well, it's my way of doing it. Amen. Don't like it. Amen. Well, I'm sorry. We see five things, five porches this morning. The title of our message is Five Porches. That ain't going to take me long to preach it, so don't look at me like cross-eyed like that. Amen. I know one preacher, he said he had a, a church member. Time out just a minute. You, he said he had a church member. He said that, he said that church member said every Sunday. So this Five Porches... We see, number one, a porch of mercy. Bethesda was a house of mercy. It was a, a place of mercy. And we see the porch of mercy where those that laid by the mercy of God could be healed. And I'll say to you today, friend, there is a porch of mercy for you today if you're lost without God. The mercy of God allows you to come to the house of God this morning. You say, well, preacher, I'm here just because that I felt like coming today. No, you're here because the mercy of God allowed you to come today. Else you'd be dead in a hole in the ground somewhere. Or you'd be laying on your bed at the house sick. Or you'd just lay out of church. It's the mercy of God that you're here today. So we see the first porch is a porch of mercy. Thank God for His mercy, amen. The mercy of God that allows me to live, amen. When I was lost, you know what keeps a lost man around? The mercy of God. If, a, if it wasn't for mercy, the lost man would go to hell without God, but God being a merciful, God gives him another day, amen. Aren't you glad for the day you got saved that God give you that day, amen? So it's a porch of mercy to the lost people. We also see here, number two, that it is a porch of grace. There's five porches. Five in Scripture is the number of grace. And we see that this, this uh, another porch here is a porch of grace where God's riches are at Christ's expense. And it is a grace that you and I, we enjoy every day, the porch of grace. I like to sit out on the porch of grace sometimes and just say, Lord, thank you for your grace. Thank you, God, for your grace of getting me through this life. Thank you for your grace of giving me those things that you give me. God's grace, God's wonderful grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Thank God for the porch of grace that I sat upon today. All of grace is my story. All the way from earth to glory. Since by grace he lifted me from sin and shame. Thank God I'm glad that one of these days when it's time for me to leave this world, guess where I'm going to be at on the porch of grace. Amen. He said, now preacher, hey, you know you're going to be sitting on your porch. I don't know, I may be driving down the highway. I may be in an airplane somewhere. I may be out on a boat fishing, but if, when, when God comes along, I'll be on the porch of grace. 
because God would be there to see me safely over. Do you know the grace of God? Do you know the mercy of God? Listen, I'm going to tell you, the mercy of God is for, for you today. If you're lost without God, your mercy of God is that you're here. And then the grace of God will come along and save you if you don't know Him. Then I see, there, the number three, there's a porch of hope. This man sat there and he could only hope. Every day he sat there and hope. Let me tell you, friend, I've got hope today. I sat on the porch of hope, hoping for the day that Jesus is going to come and get me out of here. I sat on the porch of hope today, hoping that, friend, that, that you and I will be together someday. When we leave this world, if you're saved, we will. If you're lost, we won't. But I hope that you'll get saved. My hope is not in man. My hope is not in religion. My hope is not in the Lord and in, in this world, but my hope is in the Lord. Amen. I get real discouraged watching the news. So I don't watch it much no more. I mean, you hear one thing over and over, and vain repetition over and over and over, and it's never good. Rarely ever do you hear a good news story. Guess what? My hope ain't in that no way. How many of you here are hoping in politics today? Raise your hand. Is there anybody here? You raise your hand, buddy. I'm coming after you. <laughs> ain't a politician in this world that can help us. Amen. It's going to have to be God. I'm tired of the lies of the politicians. Amen. Just give me Jesus. He's always truthful and honest. My hope ain't in politics. My hope is not in the religious system of this world. My hope is not in this world. My heart sat on the porch of hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. Number four, there's, there's a hope of healing. Lost people, if, if you're here today lost without God, you can be made whole. You can be healed if you come to the Lord. See, what's wrong with lost people? They're sick. Now, physically, they may be the most healthy people in the world. They may have no high blood pressure, no high cholesterol, no high this, that, the other. But spiritually, they're sick. They're diseased. But there is a porch of healing for those that are sick and diseased with sin. You know, there's also a porch of healing, I believe, for those that are physically sick. If it wasn't for Jesus healing you, you'd die of a cold. Did you know that? Doctors got no cure for a cold. Well, preacher, I've never known a cold to kill anybody. That's because, of the, that's because of the hope of the healing of God. Because of the porch of the healing of God. Because there's no cure for it. And if you don't get better, you'd die of a cold. No, my body, not if it wasn't for the Lord, it wouldn't. But listen, for those that are sick, that the doctors can't help. I know a lady, I know a lady years ago in my church that I attended. She went to the doctor and she had a growth in her neck. They were sure she was, it was cancer and she was going to die. She'd give it up. She just about, you know, the doctors give her up before they even, before they even did any more uh, uh, tests or anything. They said, yeah, let's, you're, you're gone. She came to the altar. People got down and prayed for her. She went back to the doctor the next week, and the doctor said, well, I don't know what happened there. She shouted all the way out of the doctor's office, amen. She said, I know what happened. The great physician came by, and he touched me, and guess what? She's still alive today. That's been 40 years ago. There was something there, but the doctors could not understand what had happened and why, you know who I'm talking about, what had happened, and they didn't know how, how can that happen. It's God. She sat on his porch of healing. Now, that, I'd love to say that that happens in every case. Sometimes it don't. But sometimes, amen, God sees fit to do that. And when he does, we ought to glorify the Lord. So there's that porch of healing. Then last of all, there's the porch of happiness. Amen. I'm, man, I'm happy this morning, brother. Max, I'm glad I'm saved. Hallelujah to God. Oh, my, I used to, when I was little, I used to run around the house just as happy as I could be. 
Did anybody ever, ever do that? Quit running in the house. Why was I running? I was happy. Amen. I was running for something. I was chasing something. But guess what? I'm on that porch of happiness. Hey, man, I'm happy in my soul. Because guess what? I don't have to go to hell. Amen. I know that I'm in the hand of God. And I know, thank God, that I can feel His touch. And I'm happy because I'm His child. I'm on the porch of happiness. Now, look, there's a lot of things I ain't got to be happy about. I'll just tell you, but hey, in the Lord, I'm happy. I, my happiness is not in my riches because I ain't got none. My happiness is not in my great physique because I don't have one. Oh, I've got a great physique, all right, but it ain't the kind, you know, that most people call great. Somebody told me the other day, you look like Buddha. I said, well, come here and kiss my foot. I, listen, I ain't happy because of anything that, you know, this world's got to offer, but I'm happy because I'm a child of God, amen, and I ought to run around being happy, amen. I just run around being happy. Now, sometimes it works, Sister Ashley. I may not be that happy, but on the inside I am. Don't shake your head that way. It's the wrong way to shake your head. Sometimes when people that work for me don't make me real happy. Amen. That's your sugar head. <laughs> I pick on her because she works with me. Amen. She, she's, she's a good worker for me. But, but all the time, I don't, may not appear to be happy, but inside my soul I'm happy. Now I try to let it run out, to run out all the time that I'm happy, but sometimes it's a fake. You ever fake happiness? Oh, if you go to the doctor's office and you're sitting down there waiting for him to call your name, if you're happy, you're faking it every bit of it. <laughs> Sit down in the dentist's chair and he's got that jackhammer. He's fixing to put in your mouth and bounce some teeth out of there with. Oh, I'm just happy as I can be. Liar. If you're like me, you're sitting there gripping the sides of that dentist's chair. But in my soul, friend, no matter, amen, I'm happy in the Lord because I'm saved by the grace of God. I'm on the porch of happiness. Hallelujah to God. I'm glad that I know Him. I'm glad He knows me. And no matter what goes on in life, friend, I'm happy in the Lord. Deep down inside, there's a happiness. Guess what? The world can't take it away from me. My boss, my boss people at work, they can't take away what's on the inside. Hey, guess what? Politicians can't take away my happiness. They made me, me, make, make me so mad I could, I could, you know, I could go off on a rant all the time on the way they act, but they can't take what's in my soul. I'm on the porch of happiness with the Lord. Let me ask you something. Are you sitting on the porch this morning? Are you sitting on, are you lost to that God? If, it, if you are, you're sitting on the porch of mercy. If you're saved by the grace of God, you're sitting on the porch of grace. If you're saved by the grace of God, you're sitting on the porch of hope. If you're saved by God's grace, you're sitting on the hope of healing, the porch of healing. And if you're sitting on the porch, if you're, if you're saved by the grace of God this morning, you're sitting on the porch of happiness. Everybody smile at me if you can. Don't you fake it, amen. Everybody just grin real big. You may not have been happy all week, but I want to tell you something. If you know Jesus, hallelujah to God, you ought to be happy inside. There ought to be a little, there ought to be something jumping up and down in your soul just trying to get out somewhere and say, Hallelujah, I'm glad I'm saved by the grace of God. Amen. Amen. I'm saved by God's grace. Oh, thank God I'm glad for the happiness that only Jesus can bring. Father, we thank you for the word of God this morning. God, I thank you for your help. I pray right now, God, that you'd help us today. Father, I pray, God, there's someone here that's lost. God, I pray this day that, that they'll acknowledge, Lord, their need of a Savior and come to you before it's too late. There's someone here today, God, carrying a burden, Lord, that don't seem like they can bear it any longer. I pray today this be the day they get on the porch of hope. And Lord, they'd understand the grace of God to see them through. We'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody stand, every head bowed, no one looking around.
I wonder why you're standing there in the stillness of the hour. I want you, everybody, to be real quiet now. I want you to think on this. I wonder if there's someone here today say, Preacher, I'm not saved. 